Hi, welcome to Floyd Model Script View Time. Today we have brand new Trumpeters, long anticipated 148 scale de Havilland C Vixen. This is the FAW2. Now, let's face it, this kit was done by Airfix many, many years ago and has long been out of production. And the world has been screaming out for this particular aircraft. You might have seen it over the years in some funny guises like Red Bull, wasn't a particular fan of it in that scheme, but it's also now flown by the Fleet Air Arm Museum as well. Uh, just down the road here at uh, RNS Yelverton, uh, and they beautiful aircraft to see. It's a gorgeous thing to see in the air, and it's lovely to see you can get it now as a kit. Because let's face it, Airfix ones on eBay go for absolutely silly money. Now, I've actually built the Airfix one before. There's a full video build on that Flory Model site you can go and check out. And again, it's one of those ones where I have to say, having not looked in this box yet, I'm a massive fan of that particular kit. And I'm looking at it right now in my display cabinet. It goes together relatively well. There's a few little fit issues, I'm not gonna lie, but actually it builds into a superb looking model and probably one of Airfix's best ever kits. So for the trumpeter boys to come along and try and knock it off its pedestal, it's gonna need to be quite heavily detailed. So down in the box, we can see lovely box art. I know there's a lot of criticism about this blue on the front, but again, it's an artist's rendition. We probably know it's not actually this color. It's normally a darker blue than that. La -dee -da -dee -da. So anyway, that side you can see probably a little bit better colors on here. So down in here, we've actually got obviously my local aircraft, as you can imagine, down in here. So we got uh, 766 Squadron. Uh, Yelverton 1969 and then also we've got our 890 uh, squadron as well down in there for those particular ones with the famous flying fists obviously Yelverton squadrons again a little bit of blurb about the Vixen uh, down on here you got your kit number which is 05808 and then down on here your last one down in here uh, and then on HMS Centaur as well uh, being the fox on the tail a couple of the missiles down in there red top um, down on there and uh, i can't remember what the other one's called but one's definitely a red top okay decals call outs for them and some bits in there right in the box ah, which is cool didn't think i was gonna get in there then uh, trumpeter's standard heavy duty box so looking at the plastic let's just get those up there beautifully Separate bagged top and bottom fuselages, nice touch. We've got some bits down in there, we've got the weaponry, we've got, ooh, that's nice, wasn't expecting that. One piece slip molded intakes and nose. I'm assuming that's parts, we've got some photo etch. Ooh, a nice protective area of decals, tools that they're coming out with, blurb sheet of stuff that's on the way. Okay, and then we should have a pull out, which is the normal way of doing it which we'll look at in a moment. Okay, instructions, as we always start. So, usual thing, parts call out, and then down on over here, we've got it down. Starting off in the nose, so we've got the actual front gear going together, nose wheel well, as you might imagine. These intakes, which we'll have a look properly at, we've got a little bit of photo etch as well for the actual strike bars down inside. Intake system, first stage compressor bade, and then a one piece molded entry for these intake systems so it's going to be going in there it's a shame it's not all one piece that would have been quite nice if that was just one piece right the way forward to the first stage compressor blade but it's not down there so unfortunately exactly the same on the other side so getting that PE in there nice and early uh, over onto the other side, so we've got the actual uh, top, uh, sorry, bottom of the fuselage half going down in there. Wheel wells to be made up and dropped in, nose wheel and intake system fitted onto that one, pretty standard. And then it's straight in there with the back plate, is going to fit down right on there like that. Interesting way of doing it. Okay, back into the cockpit area, so in with the seat, uh, we've got the actual cockpit. So it's, if you haven't realised, it is a two seater. Weirdly, one gets a sunroof. Uh, so what you actually got is the actual pilot and the navigator sits slightly behind and to his side and slightly lower. Okay, so this is how you get this sort of tandem offset seating system. And then we've actually got a little side window in here and it's gonna fit up and click in there just like that. Twin tail boom, which obviously is what makes this aircraft so uh, very nice and fashionable, uh, certainly for its day. So back to de Havilland's roots. So twin tail booms going together. Then you've got the actual stabilizer in the middle, as you might imagine, and then those are gonna lock in and drop into the top area, uh, just like that, very similar to the actual FX system. Front forward uh, fuselage system, top goes in. That's different way of doing it, but there we go. And then we've got the wing sections. So we've got control surfaces, obviously I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like they're poseable, but I'm sure you could adjust those just to make those poseable. Nav light on the outside. Photo etch fence for the wing uh, going in there. Rinse and repeat for your other side. 
Okay, and then it's just showing those being fitted onto the wings. Okay, so I'm hoping on the next page it's going to show us that we can have them folded up, otherwise I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, clear parts being fitted down in there, again it's offset, so you've actually got sunroof as I call it. So it will be in the open position, or you can have it in the closed, okay. And then obviously the rear one is a sliding system forward and back on those, okay. Uh, wheels, so we've got uh, subs. It's not showing weight on wheels, but we'll have a look. Uh, Two-piece system down there, again, different way of doing it, but we'll have a look at that more in detail when we look at the actual part itself. For the gear and the suspension travel, and then we've actually got the nozzles being fitted in the end, and then obviously we've got the gear. Uh, another piece of photo etch as well for the actual uh, air brake system underneath, and then obviously doors uh, being semi-closed up as well. I'm going to about to get disappointed. Okay, and then down on here, we've actually got gear doors, uh, two part of those, both sides in, and those are going to be fitted. Refueling probe being fitted down onto there, a couple of actuators, nose weight 20 grams, it does need nose weight on these, and there we go. So, fuel tanks. So we've got the standard fuel tanks on there. Then we've got uh, the actual red top and the actual other missiles, which I can't remember the names off the top of my head. Okay, and then those being fitted down on there, and then showing you the weapons fit on there. Hmm. A couple of things that are massively standing out to me. There's no wing fold option. FX did that years ago, and I'm looking at it. I'll get it down once we've done the review uh, for my final thoughts on this one, and we can look at the two kits. I am really disappointed there is no wing fold system. It's a carrier-borne aircraft. We're not Hasegawa in the 1980s and 90s when nothing had wing fold area. It should have wing folds. Anyway, colour call-outs, uh, as you can see down on here. So, again, it's very odd the the, the coloring why why are they yeah okay so it's saying it's burnt iron so it's not extra dark sea gray then anyway that's just a little bit odd oh, anyway so there we go right the way down so we've got the actual one uh, on center uh, sort of um, 1964 down on there and then obviously we've got the one uh, down in here my local bird as well uh, for 890 squadron and then down on here uh, we've got these. It's in medium sea grey. Perhaps it's medium sea grey. My apologies. Okay. Again, beautiful looking markings on a very nice aircraft. I'm looking at that one because I can't believe it hasn't got wing pole. Anyway, right. So, photo etch parts, as you can see, pretty thick, but these are what they are. So these are the ones down here for the actual um, air brake system, front and rear. These are those wing fences, and then we've got the intake brackets as well being fitted down onto there. So nice little bit of photo etch markings. Have a look down in here. So down in here, just slip a blade over one. Okay, so looking down at the decal sheet, they look very thick, but I'm just guessing they're very glossy as well. Catch it in the light there, you can see that carrier film glinting off of this. Okay, now these ones down here are going to run down the back end of it. There's various things you don't want to stand on back down there. The flying fist, clearly. Uh, everything seems to be in register, no problems at all. And then obviously down in here, it's for your missiles as well. Okay, fire streak, that was the one. Fire streak and red top missiles. Okay, so that's those fitted in there just like that. Okay, very nice. Right, uh, where are we gonna start? I'll tell you what, let's do those in a moment. First of all, let's have a look in the bubble bags. Nice little touch having these done like this, I must admit. I'm quite a fan of this, keeping it very nice and safe. The only thing is it's got pointy areas, so getting it out of the bag and reversing it could be a bit of a problem. There we go. Okay. Typical uh, uh, trumpeter injection molded. The molds aren't polished, so when you look at it, you probably see it on the close-up, you've got that graininess and texture to it. Okay, pretty much. Nice detail down in here in the actual uh, air brake system uh, that folds down. These here are obviously your ejection pin uh, import area, so that's what squirts it in. Okay, and then goes off and around. Okay, looking in the inside looks pretty good. Nice riveting detail. I'm not 100% sure, maybe a little bit heavy, but I think by the time you've got it painted, uh, weathered and washed and things like that down in there. It's going to look absolutely fantastic. These blister areas on the front are very nicely done. Okay, a little bit of red in there from something or other. Uh, generally nicely done. You're always going to have this problem where it's going to join on the sides here, so you're going to get caught that detail. You might end up having a little bit of a problem, but generally I have to say very nice details indeed. 
So I'm looking at this and just wondering why they would not put a, a pole system in there. Okay. So on to the other ones. We're going to be not going to play ball as easy, so we're going to cut it. Okay, so looks like we've got very nice. There we go. There we go. Okay. So down on the underside of this one again, very nice. This is the overwing section, so this is the top. Okay, so it's got nice riveting details on all of that. No problem at all, actually really very, very nice indeed. Down on the inside, very nice, we've got strengthening system, which I was looking at it to make sure we didn't have any sink marks. So it is nice to see that you can actually get these strengthening bars in here without actually any sink mark, and no sink mark on any of the thicker parts. Again, a little bit of flash running around it, you might notice just down in here on this tail. Um, so you just want to make sure those are nicely out of the way before you go around gluing it together and wondering why it doesn't fit. Okay, but again, that's very nice indeed. Okay, so let's have a look at these. One piece nose. So let's do the nose first. Again, looking very nice. No problem. We have got a centre seam running through it. But that's a couple of swipes of the old sanding stick to get rid of. That's very nice indeed. And then we've got these, which are beautifully done. Very nice. You can see we've got some nice details down in the side there. One piece uh, intakes, which is really nice. Instead of having the standard halves together and everything else, which is great because we've got no seams on the inside. What I'd like to have seen is that come a little bit longer back and give us a full length intake system. It's not very long on these and it would have just finished it off and given it a really, really nice touch. You know, this is one of those things where you can make a big fuss about it. It's got seamless intakes uh, into a kit injection molding like that with slip. Trumped up, I think you missed the boat there. You could have made a big thing of that. Right, okay, so. Down in here, we have the actual tail boom itself. Okay, so the tail boom system, as you can see, beautiful details, catching it in the light. That's gonna look absolutely stunning. Right the way down, on of those tail plane, trim tabs and things like that down in there. So down in here, we've actually got the last parts we were talking about, the intakes, the gear bottom sections. The actual, looks like the clear part's gonna be a very nice job on that, because that'll be a, dr a drop-in fit. Really nice instrument panel, again, looking pretty nice down in there. And then on the back side of that other tail boom, right the way through. Very nice indeed. Good framework on the inside, because obviously you're gonna have this shown open as well. And again, complicated way of doing it maybe, but uh, two piece uh, for the actual main gear looks pretty good as well. So no problem with that, okay. Okay, so the other half of that is gonna be a mirror almost with the exception down on here, we've actually got the gear. So down in here, you can see we've got the gear, intakes and some more cockpit details down in here. No ejector pin inside that air intake system as it moves through. And again, beautifully done. But again, just making sure we got a little bit proud here uh, on these. So maybe just worth just sanding those out just to make sure this goes in and it is in there just like that. But again, beautifully done, very nice. You can see this riveting across the top of the booms looking very very nice indeed that's going to show up absolutely fantastic with a wash okay down into we've got the forward fuselage engine deck things like that what was that it's all right that's just a bit of rubbish okay this is what we're talking about why can they they've done the actual nozzles full length but not the intakes it would have been really nice to have that done as a one piece but again you can see how they've done that really nice indeed no problem at all that forward section of the actual cockpit so it's the front, you can see some nice level of details at the top. Beautiful work, can't see any problems. A little bit of flash just on the side here again. Just my thumb area, maybe just having a look at it. Main parts of the gear, looking pretty good. So, again, this is one of those questions of why. Why have we got detail down in here for the wing fold system if it doesn't have it? Hmm. A little bit odd on that one. We're going to have to check some of these parts out in a moment. There we go. That's actually looking nice. Control surfaces, doors, other control surfaces, some of the smaller actuators and things like that. No problem again. It's all very, very nice indeed. Okay, the wings. Cockpit areas, things like that. Okay, so again, beautiful work on the tops of these wings. Okay. Very nice indeed. And then if we work our way up here, we've actually got the tub, that bottom of the actual air brake system, one of the seats, 
bottom half of the wing. So we've got the access ports down in there, things like that. It's very nice indeed. And with the pylon areas, and then we've got the doors and things like that. And then flipping over, you can see we've got the internals for these doors uh, for the main gear area, things like that. And again, very nice detail down in here underneath the speed brake area. Those types of things are beautifully done, no problem at all. Actually, it's all very nice. I don't know what this red is. My kit's got red all over it. Looks like somebody attacked it with a Sharpie. Okay. Right, so down in here, and what I'm looking for is actually a wing fold system and they just forgot to mention it in the instructions. Okay. Again, no weight on wheels. Maybe missed the boat with that one, but generally very nice detail inside as we got it round in here. Um, you can probably see we've got the actual various things for inside the wheel wells. They're going to be nicely di uh, done. First stage compressor blades just down on here as well. We've got the refueling probe, um, the sort of pitot tubes, things like that, as you might imagine. And then over here, we've actually got the arrestor hook, uh, a bit of the instrument panels, uh, rudder pedals, doors, inside of the doors. Again, beautifully done, very, very nicely molded on that as well. The wheels, as I said, no weight on wheels. We've got side wall uh, down in the cockpit area, I do believe. That'll be the area between the pilot and the co. And then obviously one piece molded pylons right the way through. And then these down here are the little areas which are gonna go on the actual air brake system as well. Again, very nicely done. Can't see any problems with those. Okay, last up, fuel tanks. So we've got fire streak and red top missiles alongside. We've got no rockets on this one. I must admit, I arm mine with rockets. But again, it's got the air to air missiles down on here. Two piece. Again, just making sure down in here, you can probably see them. We've got some little ejector pins going on. Somebody's tried to take them out, but to be honest, they failed. But a little bit of a rub just like that gets rid of those. And we've got the fuel tank system and any other areas down on there. That's actually quite a nice little set on that one. Okay, so last up, we've actually got the uh, canopy. Just being careful how we open that. Okay. Usually they are beautifully done and we are no different there. Very, very nice indeed. Beautiful work, crystal clear, no problem with those at all. And then again, red top fire street missiles, they have this sort of clear housing on the nose. Uh, we've got a HUD sight and some nav lights on those. Beautifully done, no problem. And there we have it. Okay, so I'm very disappointed, I'm not gonna hide it, that it doesn't actually come with a wing fold uh, set on this one because it would have been beautifully you know to finish it off and let's face it this thing is quite a large aircraft okay it's not going to be a small kit or anything else like that so by not having it a wing fold system I think Airfix uh, sorry Trumpeter has missed the, a bit of a thing there Airfix didn't one second now this is the Airfix one which hasn't been out in daylight for a while and as you can see, or hopefully you can see, we have full wing fold. I don't know if I've glued this to the base. It actually has a few little features, and I can't get this off the base, if I can get it off the base. Come on, there we go, a little bit of tack holding those on. This particular kit, as you can see, we did a full weathering job. We went through it and everything else. A couple of things notably you're gonna see, gear doors are closed up, things like that. And again, we've got wing fold system on this one to give you a very, very nice looking aircraft. And complete with, actually it's got moving tailplane on it uh, and stuff like that. So actually it is a very nice lump indeed right the way through with this one. This particular kit I built many, many years ago um, and haven't you know been looking at Vixens at all in that time. Very nice though, because you've got that wing fold up position means it doesn't take up much room. It fits like this into a nice little case and have no issues. This particular kit is gonna take up a little bit of room because it doesn't have the wing fold. Personally, I can imagine somebody is going to come along with a wing fold system within months to actually be able to do a quite straightforward resin replacement drop in into this one to fix the said problem. But it does look like all the parts are there, it's just it's not actually able to do it because you need the linkages to actually give it the wing fold effect, uh, which I think obviously Trumpeter have maybe missed the boat on this one. If you do want to see this build or any other Ford builds, they're obviously all available on Florian Models step by step, right the way through from opening the box to the final reveals at the end. I will show you everything. But anyway, that is Trumpeters without the wing fold system, 148 scale C fixin'.